I just very quickly want to have a look at the, some of the general capabilities. And the general capability I want to pick out is the critical and creative thinking general capability. For the earliest, earliest people, I want you to have a look at this because what I want you to do is to link it back to the early years learning framework. I'm going to pick out some aspects of the early years learning framework and link it to this later on. So when earliest people, when you're looking at this, don't look at it in terms of it doesn't apply to you. Think about where the parallels are because you could do the same sort of process I'm going to do. If you look at critical and creative thinking, the first problem with it is, is that it's, a, it's, it's talking about creative thinking in the way that the um, um, achievements, uh, the general capability does, might be a bit out of date. As we can see, for decades, we've been talking about creativity as being this, having these two parts of it, something that's novel and appropriate, generating new ideas and testing those ideas. And so really, when we think about critical and creative thinking, the whole of this is creative thinking, that generating the novelty and then testing the idea. The second part is critical thinking. That first part on its own, we might think of as being you know, kind of generative thinking or imaginative thinking. And I think that's a kind of way perhaps we used to think about, in common parlance at least, uh, creativity, that it was being imaginative, that it was generating new ideas. And in fact, you know, now I think we're moving beyond that and thinking about creative thinking being across the board. The critical thinking is a filter. But the creative thinking, the generative thinking, and then the critical thinking provides, I think, for that way in. So if we go back to the um, general capability, one of the four quadrants of the critical and creative thinking is about analysing, synthesising, and evaluating information. And so what I've done is I've just taken these words from the curriculum and just given them a bit of structure. So, you know, so this is what it says. This is what the, uh, the um, general capability says. It says that the, this element involves students applying logic, reasoning, drawing conclusions, evaluating, that they're considering and assessing the reasons behind choices, that they're assessing ideas, methods, and so on. So if you think about it in terms of those triangles that I drew, there's a lot of this. In this particular quadrant, there's a lot of this, a lot of that conver convergent thinking. Start with your stuff and apply logic, draw conclusions. So it's this kind of narrowing. There's not so much of the switch and there's not so much of the generative thinking. If we flip over and have a look at the, another quadrant, this one's the inquiring one. And when we're inquiring, this is students posing questions, identifying and clarifying information, following... Um, and then, so identifying, clarifying, clarifying information, and then organizing and processing information. So when students are inquiring, they're doing this exploration and clarification. They're doing questioning to investigate and analyze ideas. So if you're going to draw a diagram, you're going to put the triangles on it, you know, that divergent thinking and the convergent thinking and the switch, like I did on the last one, where I made them so that the convergent thinking was really big and the divergent thinking was really small. What would the balance be here? What would, which would be bigger and which would be smaller? Just 30 seconds at your table with the person next to you. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to... I've trapped myself now. I've painted myself into a corner because, of course, what I've got is an answer to show you. <laughs> you know, the answer. So what I'm going to show you is, is my interpretation. It's not the answer. So if you've got something different, then your thinking around that might be appropriate. But my thinking for this is that it's both. That, that we've got the, in this quadrant, we've got the two steps. And in fact, we've even got the switch because it's, it explicitly talks here about identifying and clarifying information followed by uh, posing questions, uh, followed by organizing and processing information. It's the, you know, it is the it depends answer um, um, from that what if kind of question. And the idea of it being followed by, for me, is, is the balance between both parts of the divergent and convergent plus the switch. Let's quickly have a look at the third one. So this is generating ideas, possibilities, and actions. And as you can see, this element is about students imagining possibilities, seeking solutions, creating new and expanding on known ideas, generating alternatives, exploring situations. What would your triangles look like? What would the weight of the two triangles and the switch be for you? Again, 30 seconds, back to you. All right, so this one's pretty, I think this is, again, 
I'm doing it. I can feel what I'm doing. I'm about to say, oh yes, I think this is pretty obvious. I know what the answer to this is and we all share the same answer. Maybe we don't. But my thinking is there's a lot of this and not so much of that. You know, there's a lot of that generative thinking going on here. I don't think it's devoid of that um, convergent thinking. I don't think it's all divergent thinking, but I think it's dominated by the divergent thinking. And the last one that I want you to think about is this reflection. Reflection on thinking, actions and processes. So in here what it talks about is thinking about thinking, about reflections on your actions, and importantly, transferring knowledge into new contexts. You know, that really empowering thing, that thing where, you know, if the students don't transfer it out of this room that we teach it in, what's the point of doing it? Transfer is such an important part of that, you know, empowerment through education for young people. It also goes on and talks about how uh, we reflect on, adjust and explain their thinking. Reflect on, adjust and explain. Identifying the thinking behind their choices and applying knowledge gained in one context to clarify another. What would the triangles look like? Back to you again. All right, if you, if you have a look, you saw I just gave it away. So, if we think about what the triangles look like there, one of the things that struck me about this and the way that I've chosen to draw my triangles is I think there's both going on. But what it made me think was, I think they're going on in this order. I think that for me, when I read this, what's going on in that transferring is I know this stuff and I've got some knowledge so I can do that critical thinking with it. But now when I'm transferring, what you're asking me to do is to think about it in different ways. What you're asking me to do with the transfer is to do the switch the other way and take this known thing and take it out and say, well, I know this. What could be the implications of that? What could be like this? Could be this? Could be this? One of my PhD students, Anne Pillman, Anne's a teacher, she's just recently, I'm going to say it, no, yes, she just recently turned 60, she's teaching for a while, and um, she, th she, the, she says the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of doing a PhD and coming to look at transfer was because she was teaching a class, and in the class she was teaching them about object science, she's a science and teacher, dropping objects from a tower. And so the kids would learn about dropping objects from a tower, she was giving them some tasks to do, some activities, some questions about dropping objects. One of the activities or one of the questions was about dropping objects down a well. And one of the kids said to her, what's this? I can do dropping objects from a tower, but dropping them down a well, we haven't done that. <laughs> so she had clearly in her head kind of what she thought she was teaching, but what the kids were learning, what the kids were transferring was, was quite different from that. And so what they were able to do was take dropping the objects off a tower and do it again and again and again. They were good at that. They got good at doing that convergent thinking, that critical thinking. But what they couldn't do was say, okay, so this learning that I've got, how does it apply to that? It could be like this, it could be like this, it could be like this. They couldn't do that divergent thinking and it was stopping them from doing the transfer. So if you think about critical and creative thinking across the board, um, what we're seeing is, you know, if you think about it in terms of these triangles that I've been drawing, you know, across the critical and creative thinking um, general capability, we've got all of these triangles going on in some way or another. One of the things that worries me, though, is that there's kind of an alert going on here for me. When we look at things like, you know, we want our students to collect, compare and evaluate information from a range of sources. There's always a danger that we get pushed into thinking those things as those things as being actions. You know, can the kids collect, compare, and evaluate information? So do a task and they've done it and say, yes, there's some evidence of collection, there's some evidence of comparing, there's some evidence of evaluating. But that's just looking at their actions, the things, the motions, the things that they've gone through, rather than that kind of enacted intent. You know, within this, have they been using that critical thinking, if that was my intent? Within this, have they been using that divergent, imaginative thinking, if that was my intent? How have they, how have they developed as, a, as an inquirer in this? Are they really bringing out the, what I was intending for them to happen, rather than just going through the motions of inquiry? And so, you know, these things, you know, using questions to investigate, Oh yeah, kids have asked some questions. Tick, they've done that. But are they really using questions to investigate? Are there questions? Are they, are they asking themselves those challenging questions? Am I making sure that they're challenging themselves and they're asking those questions that are getting that divergent thinking going? 
it's interesting at, um, at Seaview, Penny, Penny Tranter there and some work with a TEFL pilot, one of the things that they're doing there is, because they've got this identity as an advanced manufacturing school, they're focusing on the advanced and they're getting the th kids to really think about uh, think them about themselves in this kind of challenging way to go beyond the actions. And one of the ways they've chosen to enact that is through talking about ungoogleable questions. And it was interesting when we started off and we did the, um, the activity, the events list and put them in chronological order and the questions were, can we Google it? Yeah, go for it. Go That's a Googleable question. Um, but the it depends questions are non googleable questions, right? You, you can't do it. You can't Google an, an it depends question. And of course, now what's happened is that the kids have shifted. Because now, there's a, now that there's an expectation of this shift from Googleable, knowing things, filtering, inequity, to equitable questions that are open, that uh, I can put my truth into it, I can put my response into it, I can put my interpretation into it. What's going on now is the kids are saying, hang on, that's a Googleable question. Ask me another. Ask me an ungoogleable question. They're shifting from the actions to that enacted intent. The kids are expecting to be asked um, uh, ungoogleable questions when they're doing that um, when they're doing that inquiry. And I think that, you know, when I think about this and the shift to actions, for me, this has been the death of things like blooms and gardeners and stuff like that. You know. Bloom wrote his uh, taxonomy in the 50s and revitalized it in the 2000s. And in 2001 said that he thought that the original paper was probably one of the most cited and yet least read um, articles in education. Because what had happened was consultants and others had taken what he said, turned it into actions and pitched it at teachers rather than the intent of what he'd written. Gardner spent the last 20 years going, I didn't mean that. Um, because what people have done is taken multiple intelligences and cut it up and made it into a set of, of actions. You know, I think about blooms, I've seen worksheets that, you know, start off with recall and then go through and then at the bottom it says create, you know, draw a picture of. And, and it's just, it just ripped the heart out of it and it's not his intent at all and it's shifting back to that inequity. And so the difference between, like, you know, in this case, doing inquiry and developing inquirers, for me, is like the difference between solving problems and problem solving. You know, that doing inquiry and the solving of problems is that kind of going through the motions that's got lots of convergent thinking in it, but not much divergent. But really, the developing inquirers, the equitable development of inquirers, the equitable being able to step into problem solving, for me, there's a kind of real parallel there. And I'm thinking about it, of course, in terms of these triangles again. And so, just to finish that point, you know, that solving problems and doing inquiry is a set of actions achieved by practicing those actions, achieved by, you know, doing the worksheet, the perimeter worksheet. But that real problem solving, that ability to come at a problem, that real development of inquirer is re development of inquirers is really a way of being, and it's achieved by kind of living up to expectations, and that's what you know we've seen at Seaview that by changing the expectations, they've changed the way that the kids are thinking. They've gone through the going from going through the motions to really being effective inquirers, really being effective at problem solving. One of the first things that they've seen in that, I think, that's been really powerful is that now the research project in the senior secondary years is one of their best subjects. That the kids finding their truth rather than matter of fact has really empowered their kids to be problem solvers and to have been developed as inquirers. I wanted to make a link here as well, back to the uh, TEFL framework. Because I think in the TEFL framework, if you think about it as this kind of, this way of being, this change in the expectations of the kids. For me, those, uh, the domains, if you think about domains two, three, and four, now within that, if we're thinking about, you know, if we just pick one, domain three, the first element there, teaching students how to learn. Getting kids to think about, you know, potentially this divergent thinking followed by the convergent thinking. Because the metacognition, the thinking about your thinking, is really crucially important in that, so that you don't get trapped in either just divergent or convergent that you're able to make the switch at the right time. And of course, that element down in the bottom left-hand corner of domain two, challenging students to achieve high standards with appropriate support. That challenge 
that high standards and that's those standards being informed by both achieve well all of achievement engagement growth equity <laughs> I've lost one challenge thank you it was challenge it was already there that you know that that nature of challenge as well shifting from the West Bengal challenge shifting from the the perimeter challenge with all the bits and pieces towards that real problem solving, towards that interpretation, towards that what if.